Hello everyone, this is Justin Smythe from nextbigtrade.com. This is your weekly index review for April 5th, 2024. Starting off with the S&P 500, we can see on the weekly chart, the S&P 500 was down just under 1% for the week. Uh, we now have three out of the last five weeks where the S&P 500 has closed lower. And volume really uh, continues to be lacking in this market except for the last two trading days of this past week where there was a heavy sell-off on Thursday and then the market did bounce on heavier volume on Friday so since the middle of March uh, specifically March 15th which was the options expiration date um, for the previous month that was the last day which was a friday where there was you know really heavy volume in the stock market and it's just been completely absent um until this the end of this current week and that's really why the market's just kind of grinded sideways and not had much of a move higher so you can see in this weekly chart really the change in volume over the past five weeks where the selling pressure has now been heavier on the downside and unlike most of this rally where there was more buying pressure pushing this market higher now we're starting to see more of this heavy volume on the sell side which was similar to what happened uh, as the market was in a correction you know back at the end of July 2023 and which ended at the end of October 2023 so we're starting to see the selling pressure that continued into the market this week if we jump over to the daily chart you can really see uh, again here's the quad witching day the option, options expiration day in March then we've had basically a complete lack of volume in the market since then but then Thursday there was an afternoon sell-off you know a pretty aggressive sell-off uh, that took the market uh, from you know, I think it was over a percent up for the day, down over a percent for the day. So a big intraday reversal on Thursday. And then on Friday, the market did bounce, but the daily volume on the S&P 500 was below average. So again, the selling pressure is really keeping a cap on this rally coming out of the Fed meeting. And really we're setting up a potential failed breakout now at the at the point where the market rallied after the Fed meeting in the middle of March, we have a bearish engulfing candle on the daily chart, which occurred on Thursday. And then we did bounce on Friday. But if we start to continue to fail here and roll over into next week, uh, the S&P 500 is going to set up a failed breakout. So not bullish activity really in the stock market right now and we'll move into some other indices that were even weaker than the s p 500 uh, but first technology did outperform this week and it really did save the rest of the market uh, because there was heavy selling pressure in consumer cyclical and healthcare stocks so the nasdaq 100 was down less than the s p 500 but again volume was heavier on the downside and notably, the NASDAQ 100 has actually had four out of the last five weeks where it has closed lower now. Same thing with the NASDAQ, heavier volume on the downside. And again, the volume pattern has completely changed, uh, really starting at the end of February, where we we're starting to get more selling pressure coming into this market. And now looking at the Dow, this is really where there was even more weakness. The Dow now is on a failed breakout out of the Fed meeting where the Dow has a bearish engulfing candle uh, this past week, losing over 2%. And really the Dow was impacted by its heavy exposure to consumer cyclical and healthcare stocks. And, you know, not having any technology stocks, the Dow was under even more pressure this week. You can see how the volume on the Dow here was the heaviest downside volume in 2024 this past week. So, you know, big selling pressure coming into the Dow this week. The Russell 2000 just continues to underperform the S&P 500, you know, this late in a rally. 
uh, we should see the small caps really outperforming, and that just is not happening. There's a potential for a, a failed breakout setting up here. If we see more selling pressure heading into next week, uh, we can we can close below the December highs potentially and set up that failed breakout. And again, there's a lack of volume, you know, in the Russell 2000, just like the rest of the major indices, which has led to a very weak rally um, in the Russell over the last month. Now turning to the short term breadth, we had the biggest decline in 2024 week over week in short term breadth for the S&P 500 this week, uh, going from around 85% to around 70% of stocks above the 50 day moving average. So big decline and longer term, we're, we're just setting up this big divergence here where, you know, less stocks made it above the 50 day moving average later in this rally. And these are the type of divergences that lead to major stock market corrections. One of the last ones that occurred uh, at the end of 2022 was a divergence into early 2023 that led to a stock market correction that started in February 2023. Less stocks participated and then the stock market sold off and got oversold in breadth, which turned out to be a good buying opportunity in March 2023. So the same type of scenario setting up here, big divergence in the number of stocks that are above the 50 day moving average. And we could be headed towards, you know, a great buy point in 2024 where the stock market needs to get oversold, you know, below 20% of stocks above the 50 day moving average, but it takes a while to get down there. So really patience is the name of the game, uh, you know, until we get down there and then we'll be in another great position to buy stocks uh, with the S&P 500 being a tailwind coming out of a correction and not a headwind as it is right now. And you can see this lack of participation in the NASDAQ composite as well, where since the start of 2024, you know, just there's just been so much less participation in the stock market from smaller cap technology stocks, from smaller cap stocks in general. Even though the market has grinded higher, it's been led higher by, you know, a select group of mega cap tech stocks and these other you know smaller cap stocks have just been unable to rally in a lot of cases during this whole period from january 2024 all the way through now so the last uh, three months essentially there's just been no pickup in participation in the nasdaq and now we're starting to see this divergence potentially lead to a rollover in the stock market where finally once the you know, mega cap stocks start selling off, the rest of the market goes into correction. So big time divergence here. And again, these are the type of things that set up big corrections in the stock market. Finally, turning to the VIX, most bullish close of the week this year for the VIX, probably the biggest technical event of the week. Uh, the VIX had failed to break out during numerous occasions this year. Again, even though the stock market has been rising this year, the VIX has been rising all year. It's just been unable to break out because large cap and mega cap technology stocks have held up this entire market. So now with the VIX breaking out, you know, breaking above resistance, closing above these key moving averages, now the market is set up for a correction here and if there's you know big selling in large cap tech stocks the VIX is probably going to break out and explode higher which will lead to the first correction of the year so this is a good time to check out the shorting guide if you haven't checked it out yet uh, it discusses you know trading with the VIX and basically now that we have a VIX breakout we want to watch for you know a potential top to form in the VIX a big reversal will lead to potentially the end of the, the correction, but then once the VIX closes back below the 10 week moving average, just like it did in October, 2023, that's a good time to 
start thinking about getting long stocks again. So right now we're at the cusp of a breakout in the VIX, which could be leading to again, the first major stock market correction of 2024.